Hello, hello, and welcome to the second part of our 6.73 patch discussion. Today, WSLK and I will be discussing the item changes made in the patch. Alrighty, so first we're going to hit up the existing items and their changes. Uh, first up on the list, we have Boots of Travel. The recipe cost has been decreased from 2200 to 2000, as well as the movement speed has been increased by 5, uh, being 100 now. Uh, that's, I mean, certainly a nice little buff, but I don't really see it impacting that many heroes. I mean, aside from Tinker, who of course, Boots of Travel is core every game on Tinker. Yeah, like you said, basically the only hero that this is really going to affect is Tinker. I'd like to see Boots of Travel tweaked in a way where it's not such a highly situational item for literally every single hero in the game besides Tinker. I'd like to see a little bit more use out of this item. Yeah, I think they're on they're Ice Truck's trying really hard to move it away from the luxury style because pretty much all boots are not really luxury items and they're really the first kind of recipe item that you go for almost any game. Um, anyways, the next few items, there's not particularly any huge changes to them and I'm just gonna breeze through them real quickly. Uh, we have Bloodstone, the initial charges was increased from 5 to 6 and the respawn reduction increased from 3 to 4 seconds per charge. Uh, for Butterfly, we have a 5% increase in evasion. Divine Rapier, the damage increased from 250 to 300. Uh, Ethereal Blade, the Ether Blast cast range increased from 700 to 800. Uh, Yule, Scepter of Divinity, the movement speed went up from 25 to 30. Magic Wand, uh, I consider this more of like a bug fix. Uh, it doesn't lose charges anymore when you're upgrading it, which is something that was always really annoying. Uh, Mask of Madness, the movement speed went up from 20% uh, 20 to 25%. Uh, Majolner, the bounces of lightning increased from 4 to 8 bounces as well as the Orb of Venom, uh, the cost of the item decreased from 450 to 350. Uh, now that we've gone quickly through those, uh, we're going to hit up the last few existing items which have more significant changes and I think will have a bigger impact on the game. Um, the Lincoln Sphere is the first of these items. Uh, they added the plus 10 damage to account for the component bonuses which was lost previously. Um, and now it's no longer triggered by Medallion of Curlage and Urn of Shadows. This is actually a huge buff to this item. What made it significantly weaker and a poor choice for literally every hero is the fact that it can be countered by items that cost less than a thousand gold. And with this not being the case anymore, this item got significantly better in my opinion. This might have quite a few implications as far as the more competitive scene goes. It's still not a spectacular item, but I feel like this is a step in the right direction to make Lincoln's Fear actually viable again. Mm -hmm. And I've always been a long time, long time fan of uh, Morphling in competitive games. And this is just, you know, one little step for him. Uh, I, I love more feeling and the 10 damage will go a long way, as well as the fact that Lincoln Sphere is already core on him, as well as a lot of other high tier heroes like Medusa. Um, the next item here on our list is Necromonican. Uh, the Archer's Mana Burn cast range increased from 250 to 600. The Archer's attack damage got buffed tremendously. Level 3 Necromonican, the damage of the range creep now does 120 per attack. And the Warrior, uh, the melee creep, got a damage buff as well, and it now does 75 damage per attack. So that's huge damage increase. Uh, I think overall that's almost 50 between the two of them of a damage increase. Yeah, Necronomicon received a huge buff this patch. The Archer's Mana Burn got a significant buff, literally doubling in size. And the damage is pretty significant. I think anyone who is able to micro Necronomicon properly is going to get a huge result in this next patch. Yeah, I definitely foresee Necromonicon returning as a core item onto Beastmaster and possibly even Furion. Uh, definitely like to see the Furion pushing multiple lanes. Necromonicon is going to be serious pushing asset now with that increased damage. Uh, it's just going to mow down towers. I mean, it already did before, and now they're just making it even stronger. Um, and next up we have the what I believe is the biggest item change other than the new items, which of course have been added. Um, they reworked the recipe for Orchid Malevolence. Uh, the old Orchid, of course, cost... Uh, it was composed of three uh, Oblivion Staffs. Now it's only two Oblivion Staffs and a Recipe. Uh, and the Recipe is only 775 gold. 
So the new orchid costs uh, just under a thousand gold less. It's uh, nine hundred gold less actually, um, and it provides essentially the same stats. Uh, it gives twenty-five intelligence, thirty attack speed, and thirty damage, compared to the old one, which gave twenty intelligence, thirty attack speed, and forty-five damage. So really, isn't is an int here? You're only losing ten damage for basically a thousand gold. Uh, I see this being like a huge buff to anyone who's getting Orchid. Uh, now that Orchid's moved out of the 5,000 gold range items and into the 4,000 ones, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more heroes get it. Especially because previously it was kind of a choice between Ginsu's and Orchid's since they were the same price range. Uh, now that Orchid's a lot cheaper, I think that a lot of people are going to be snatching that up instead of uh, Ginsu much earlier in the game. Yeah, I completely agree. This is going to have pretty heavy metagame changes, I feel like, because this item just became literally twice as attractive. That thousand gold is absolutely huge as far as heroes picking it up. And like you said, now that it doesn't have to compete with a higher tier item like Winsu, it is going to be readily picked up on a vast majority of heroes that already pick up Orchid. And I feel like even heroes that didn't get it previously are going to start to think about maybe getting it because the effect is quite nice for the cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely buff to uh, Storm Spirit, probably Furion, uh, Broodmother as well. Um, they're going to have this item much sooner, and uh, especially Storm Spirit is going to be able to snipe heroes much quicker in the game than previously. Uh, moving on here, it looks like there's a few more minor changes. Smoke of Deceit had a uh, Dispel AoE increase, uh, Refresher Orb got plus 6 intelligence, Stygian Desolator, the recipe was decreased by 300 gold, so that's a nice little buff to Desolator. And then Vanguard got a little bit of a nerf, it lost 25 uh, hit points. And then the final existing item change was to Veil of Discord, which now effectively costs 450 gold less, because uh, it doesn't require two robes of the Magi, just one now. Uh, an item that previously was never ever seen in Dota. I don't think I've ever seen anyone get a Veil of Discord. So... Maybe we'll see this someday, but I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that the biggest drawback to that item was the huge price tag on the recipe. I feel that rather than cutting the robe of the Magi, I think he should have removed it from somewhere else in the recipe as, as far as the cost goes. So I think if he wanted it to be more prevalent, he definitely needed to snipe it out of the recipe cost and not from the smaller... 450 gold item. Mm -hmm. And I mean, additionally, the item <laughs> gives like pretty much no survivability. It gives, you know, the five armor from the Helm of Iron Will that's in the recipe, but I mean, like, honestly, you're getting it on an int hero. It's meant to be like an early game pickup and it offers no survivability. And there's so many other items that are just like way better from any int hero, you know, like mech, four staff, pipe. I mean, there's, there's a ton of stuff. Uh, Medallion of Courage. Okay. Anyways, uh, I digress. We're going to move on to the new items here. The first item here is called the Rod of Atos. Uh, this item requires two staffs of wizardry, a vitality booster, and it costs 3,100 gold. It gives 25 intelligence, 250 health, and it has an active ability called Cripple, which slows the target's movement speed for 50% for 4 seconds. This is probably going to be the best item in the game for any int hero like it has every single thing that an int hero would want it expands your mana pool it increases your survivability and it has an amazing active effect all for the very low low cost of 3100 gold this is going to be a huge game changer i feel yeah, that was a nice sales pitch there. Um, yeah, I definitely think this is going to be a huge item in the metagame right now. Um, I'm just already kind of thinking in my head, like, this item is going to be pretty awesome on here. It's like Witch Doctor or something like that. Cripple is going to be awesome. He's going to be able to solo kill. Like, uh, I mean, not that solo killing is really that prevalent in competitive games, but certainly in more public scenes, uh, this game is going to be awesome. Especially, I mean, even in competitive games, it's going to be awesome item uh the health intelligence damage there i just don't see anything wrong with the item um okay uh so moving on to the next item which i think is an almost equally as awesome item uh geared towards strength heroes now it's called Hel heaven's halberd uh the recipe requires assange the tal talisman of evasion 
and there's no recipe, it just auto combines on purchase, it costs 3950 gold, and it gives 20 strength, 25 damage, and 25% evasion. Additionally, it has lesser main, which is the passive ability, and it's not an orb effect anymore, mind you, and it has an active ability called Disarm, which removes a target's ability to attack for 4 seconds if it's range, and for 3 seconds if it's melee. You know, this is just as big of an item as the Rad of Atos, but for strength heroes. I think that it basically takes all the check marks for any item in the game. It gives you survivability, it gives you a massive amount of damage. It also gives you evasion, which is a significant amount of effective health if you were to do the math behind it. So it is a great item all around, as well as it's going to be a really useful ability to kind of stop carries who don't have a BKB yet, or some way to stop this effect from being applied to them. This can really change the tide of a team battle if used at a proper moment. Mm -hmm. I think this item uh, is a great change to the game. Um, I really enjoy that they're trying to kind of diversify the item builds that you can go. Uh, I like that they added a new strength item. Uh, I previously felt like choices are really limited as a strength hero, like, you know, Axe and Dragonite and stuff. Basically, you just go, like, hardcore survivability, like, you know, maybe get, like, a Vanguard, and then your options are really, like, Heart, Armlet, BKB. Those are your choices, and you're probably going to end up getting all of them, and then maybe, like, an Assault Curious or something like that. So this is a really cool item. Uh, it's also nice that Sanj, it was only in one recipe before, you know, Sanj and Yasha. It's uh, awesome that they use Sanj in something else, like they already did for Yasha. So I feel like this is kind of a strength version of the Manta style, giving a really cool active ability. Uh, I think it's an awesome anti-carry. I think it'll be great on heroes like Axe, actually. Um, we'll just kind of have to see how this item plays out, but I expect great things from it. Uh, the next new item on our list here is called the Ring of Aquila. This recipe requires a Wraith Band and a Ring of Basilius. Uh, it gives 9 damage, plus 3 all stats, plus 3 agility, plus 1 armor, plus 2 armor aura, and plus 0.65 mana regeneration aura. And you might think that I just said a ton of stuff and this item is overpowered. But if you look carefully at the stats, you will notice that it basically just consolidates a Wraith Band and a Ring of Basilius into one inventory slot. Yeah, it's really just a convenience thing with this item. I mean, I guess it's a nice perk for Morphling. Yeah, uh, that, I mean, it's nice now, uh, it's gonna free up an item slot so agility pushers can, uh, get a little bit more from the Ring of Basilius and not have to sell it off a bit earlier. Uh, like heroes like Potom, Weaver, heroes that are basically soloing a long lane in more competitive games, they're gonna have the ability to get an early Ring of Basilius, so if they're let alone, they can, uh, push towers, uh, as well as they can get a little bit more out of it as previously just having to give up an entire item slot for the ring now they can uh, get a little bit of stats out of it as well for just you know a mere 485 more gold <laughs> um moving on to the next item here which uh has everyone up in arms uh it has a huge price tag on it uh most expensive item in the game other than dagon 5 it is the abyssal blade the recipe requires a sacred relic and a Cranium Basher, and the total cost on that is 6,750 gold, and it provides 100 damage, intense strength, as well as the passive ability Bash, 25% chance to bash for 1.4 seconds, as well as Overwhelm, which is an active ability which disables a target for 2 seconds and can also be cast on magic immune units. I really think that this is a 6,800 gold waste. There is nothing really good about this item. You basically get the combined effect. You get four strength, and that's about it, and the overwhelm effect. Other than that, you're really getting nothing. Cranium Basher is probably the biggest waste of gold in the game already, and the fact that it just costs 6,800 gold just makes it just really bad. Even, even though overwhelm is quite a nice active effect, it's still horrible. Mm -hmm. I could see people having some fun with this in more public games, but I think the item's really, really restricted by its really big price tag, as well as the fact that the components are really expensive as well. I mean, Sacred Relic's almost 4k gold, and 
uh, you have to save all of that gold and you're not buying another item for four quid gold, which is just as good. I mean, hell, you could have a basher and a BKB instead of finishing <laughs> your Abyssal Blade. Uh, I really think the only time that this ever would appear in like a competitive game is if the game is lasting, you know, 60 minutes and everyone has a BKB, everyone's got a ton of gold, everyone has buyback gold, and someone buys it so they can counter a BKB on the opponent's team. But other than that, I, I see its use as being really limited. Um, we're just going to have to see, wait, how this pans out. I actually think they might change it to be a Demon Age, Demon Age instead of a Sacred Relic. That's that's my idea for a fix there. I mean, uh, but who am I? I'm just some guy. Anyways, uh, moving on to our last new item here, Tranquil Boots. Uh, a new boot selection, finally. Uh the requirements for this are Boots of Speed, a Ring of Protection, and a Ring of Regeneration. There is no recipe. It costs 1,025 gold, and it gives 80 movement speed, 3 HP regeneration, and 3 armor, as well as an ability called Rejuvenate, which is an active ability which can restore 150 hit points over 10 seconds. It's non-combat, and it can only be used on yourself. The drawback of this item is that if you take three or more instances of damage in the past 10 seconds, the item temporarily breaks and becomes basic boots uh, until you haven't taken three instances of damage in the last 10 seconds. So uh, it's kind of confusing how that's worded, but essentially you lose the three HP regen, the three armor, the active ability, as well as 25 movement speed when you're taking damage. So this is meant to be more of a non-combat item, uh, something it gives more movement speed, if you've noticed, than any other boot in the game, other than uh, boots of travel or phase boots when you're using phase. Um, it's, I imagine it's meant to be a supportive or a roaming boot, which uh, allows you to move between lanes much more quickly, and you're not really going to be getting that much use out of it when you're fighting anyway, so I really don't think the drawback is that big. Yeah, like you said, this is going to be restricted to roamers or supportive type heroes. I don't think it's really going to see that much use. I honestly don't think it's really that good of an item. It is on the cheaper end, so it does have that going for it, but I don't think it's strong enough to push support heroes to pick it up, especially since the boot breaks down to normal boots if they take too many instances of damage, making them a free kill. Mm, I, I mean, I think the restrictive thing on it is that, you know, the, the bonuses that it gives for the extra 500 gold on top of the boots are kind of meager, especially for a support hero. Uh, I think that they might get a little bit more out of like a bracer or something else that they can turn into something like a Django later in the game. Uh, but that's just me personally. I I think this game will be, I mean, this item will be used plenty. I know there's going to be a lot of experimenting done with it. Uh, we might see it become the new standard for support boots. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see how things unfold. Uh, anyways, this wraps up the item discussion for the 0.73 patch changes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, once again, this was WSOK and Zegas. Uh, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for our final part of the .73 patch updates where we will be discussing the new heroes that were added to Dota, and eventually they will be added to Dota 2.